ladies and gentlemen, if you've been following my videos for a while, then you know that I have done quite a, uh, you know, a, a series of different screens on sunburns and how people are impacted by those sunburns and those of us that are not impacted by sunburning. And you also know that I've told you that damn near all of these sunscreens on the shelf are toxic. And I remember them recommending that black people use sunscreen, which I don't and I won't use. Um, never been sunburned a day in my life. I'm out there for long periods of time. Nothing has ever happened. So I don't worry about such things like buying sunscreen. The shit don't even work anyway. I don't know why you're recommending it to anybody. It don't work. How many times have we done stories or you heard me do stories on people that use sunscreen and or put sunscreen on their baby or their children and they still get all scorched up out the sun every single year? Most of these sunscreens on the shelf are totally ineffective. They don't work. This is why all summer long, you're going to see these people walking past you flaming red all summer. You'll see them. So this came out in wired.com. May 6, 2019 sunscreen chemicals soak all the way into your bloodstream. Mm -mm -mm. First, it's killing the coral reefs. Now it's going all the way into the bloodstream. And remember, it's toxic. By now, you've probably been taught to grid your sun-starved uh, skin for the battle with skin cancer causing cosmic rays every time you go outside. Now, I love the sun. I love the sun. I love taking in the rays. I love being out there. And I love the fact that I don't have to put anything on my skin to enjoy the sun. Choose a spray, choose a lotion, but by heavens, choose something. Legions of doctors, parents, and YouTube beauty influencers are unanimous on this point. But with sunscreen application evolving from a week or two at the beach every year to a constant daily slather. U.S. health regulators want to know more about how all of those photoprotective chemicals interact with people's skin. If they sink into tissues and get absorbed into the bloodstream, that could be a problem. Well, how could it not? You're putting something on your skin and your skin has a lot of pores, right? So that means it would go through your tissue and into your bloodstream. How could it not? It's not like you're putting a piece of scotch tape on your skin. <laughs> it's going to absorb. Then like other over-the-counter drugs, the Food and Drug Administration oversees sunscreens, uh, should be studied to make sure they don't mess up people's hormones, affect their reproductive systems. Ah, oh, I think I know why they're doing this. Or cause cancer. Such safety testing has never been done on the active ingredients in sunscreen because those chemicals were approved decades ago before anyone suspected they could be absorbed into the body. Now... We know it's more than just a suspicion. Today, researchers at the FDA revealed the results of a small clinical trial designed to test how four of the most common sun filtering molecules on the market behave after they've been sprayed on and rubbed in. The results publish, uh, published in the journal uh, I think this is their medical journal, JAMA, uh, show that contrary to what sunscreen manufacturers have been saying, UV blocking chemicals do seep into circulation. Now don't panic and toss your tubes. There's no evidence yet 
that they're doing anything harmful inside the body. That, well, that's bullshit. Come on, y'all. You know, they don't want to come out and say anything because they know if they don't say anything um, suggestive, then these manufacturers won't run the risk of losing money. It's all about money at the end of the day. They really don't care about people. But the revelation will have serious impacts on sunscreen manufacturers going forward and may change what options you'll find on drugstore shelves before the year is out. Now, wait a minute. In ancient Egypt, didn't they say they were using olive oil? <laughs> that shit would fry their butts up even quicker. Okay. You get out there with some olive oil on your skin and you're, you're pale and please, you're going to burn up faster with that stuff on. Everyone had always thought that because these are intended to work on the surface of the skin, that they wouldn't be absorbed, but they are, says Dr. Teresa Michelle, director of the FDA Division of Non-Prescription Drug Products and co-author on the FDA-funded study. Well, that's stupid. How can a cream that you put on don't absorb through the skin? Are you kidding me? This is, is this what they've been going around telling these people? And you see them still burning up even with sunscreen on? Wow. Okay. Um, her team found that it took only a few hours after the application of sunscreen for the photoprotective chemicals to infiltrate the bloodstream and shoot up to concentrations above the FDA's toxicology threshold that triggers further safety testing. So it is a problem, y'all. It is a problem. The researchers saw the same pattern in all 24 of the volunteers. They recruited 12 men and 12 women who were randomly assigned to apply one of four commercially available sunscreens, two sprays, a lotion, and a cream. The participants applied their portion according to recommended labeling four times a day for four days to 75% of their body. So 75% is when they put on a bathing suit and then those exposed areas, that's where they apply the sunscreen. For those four days and three days after, the researchers collected blood every few hours to analyze for the presence of avobenzone, oxybenzone, octocrylene, and ecamsol. 30 samples in all. They have to, y'all got to put that shit on four times a day? Oh, man. That, I would never want to put nothing on that amount of times a day. Oh man, y'all got some problems. They discovered that while it took only a few hours for the UV blocking chemicals to spike over the target for three of the four formulations, those levels remain elevated. Though the end, uh, through the end of the study, three days after participants had ceased spraying and smearing, only the cream users saw the chemical concentration tail off sooner. Ladies and gentlemen, these folks have convinced the world that they got the best skin and look at what they go through. They don't hardly have no best skin. They got the worst skin on the planet. <laughs> you got the worst, if you got to go through all of this, you got the worst skin on the planet. But see, they own the media so they can put that kind of propaganda out there. But when you read about stuff like this, you know the whole thing is bullshit. Let's go on. The fact that these sun filtering molecules do penetrate into the circulation system does not on its own mean that such ingredients are unsafe. 
this person is full of crap. They're, they're just, they're, they're a walking contradiction. First, they find this, these chemicals in their bloodstream. Now you're saying that it doesn't mean it's unsafe. Talk about playing both sides of the fence. This is exactly what they're doing. There might be nothing, but that would be great, said Kincaid Shanky, a dermatologist at UC San Francisco and the editor-in-chief of JMMA Dermatology. But the problem is that we don't know. Well, if you don't know, how can you say it's not unsafe? This person is a walking contradiction. They're all over the place. First, they find concentrations of this stuff in the bloodstream. Then she says, it doesn't mean it's unsafe. Then she said, well, we really don't know. Ooh, boy. Mm, I, I'm getting a headache just following her. The bottom line, she says, is that although the evidence is irrefutable that the sun causes skin cancer, scientists know a lot less about sunscreen chemicals, relative risk and benefits to understand what, if any, effects such as chemicals have on internal tissue will take more research. Particularly urgent is learning more about long-term exposure and how absorption rates differ in infants and children with their smaller ratio of body surface to overall size. Then there's the importance of real world data. For example, assessing sunscreen effects on a hot sandy beach instead of in a lab, a, cl a clinical lab, temperature and humidity controlled confines. Yet the trial results underscore the need for more data on sunscreen absorption as the FDA has a long demanded from manufacturers without success. History of sunscreen regulation is long and contentious, but the core of the conflict boils down to the fact that the U.S. treats sunscreen as an over-the-counter drug and the rest of the world considers it a cosmetic. When new research emerged in the late 1990s and early 2000s, suggesting that UV blocking ingredients in chemical based sunscreens could be absorbed into the human body, the agency began to ask any company bringing new molecules to market to include such data in their safety studies. Those corporations balked and development stalled in the US. Meanwhile, Europe added at least eight new more advanced uh, photoprotective filters to its sun shielding arsenal. Mm -mm -mm. In an effort to end the stalemate, Congress passed the Sunscreen Innovation Act in 2015. Y'all need some shit to be passed in Congress over your skin? And sunscreen? Oh, man. <laughs> Shit. As part of the effort, in February, the Food and Drug Administration announced it was overhauling the way the agency regulates sunscreen to keep pace with evolving science. Chief among the proposed changes was subjecting the 16 UV filtering chemicals currently on the U.S. market to the same scrutiny as new molecules. Well, damn, man, I'm glad I'm melanated. That's all. <laughs> Woo, I wouldn't want your skin for all the tea in China. You can keep that shit. I'll keep my melanated skin. To prove they're safe and effective, FDA is now asking U.S. sunscreen makers to submit additional data measuring how these ingredients absorb into the bloodstream. If they don't absorb above toxicological threshold, no problem. But 
If they do, FDA want to see more tests assessing cancer risk and harm to the reproductive system and endocrine system. Standard drug safety stuff. The idea was to make it easier for new ingredients to compete against the legacy ones that hadn't been assessed by the FDA in decades. But the testing requirements could also end up giving Americans fewer choices, at least in a short run. If U.S. manufacturers fail to conduct absorption studies and provide that data to the FDA by the time the agency's new rules are finalized in November, it could mean, in theory, the removal of those products from shelves. Only two ingredients so far have been ruled safe and effective, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. The FDA has said they will grant deferrals to companies willing to commit to undertaking the necessary studies for the remaining 12 molecules in question. Well, damn, they have to pass bills just so, just so they can keep sunscreen on the shelves. And, oh man, y'all got some problems. What was that called? Congress Sunscreen Innovation Act to regulate sunscreens. They don't have to pass nothing. Well, the only thing they passed regarding our skin, y'all, was the slave codes, pig laws, and black codes. But it wasn't no sunscreen. It was just garbage they made up because they're a bunch of racists. That's all. But as far as sunscreens is concerned, they ain't had to make up nothing because we were burning out in the sun. Now, man, I mean, look, chattel slavery would have had to end a lot sooner if our people were burning up in the sun and they couldn't make a profit off of our free labor. So we couldn't have been burning up out there. Look, they got centuries of free labor. You wouldn't have got that if slaves were out there burning up. Man, I tell you what. I love my melanin. I love that I don't have to worry about no toxic sunscreen on the shelf for my skin. Nobody in my family got to wear no sunscreen and we don't ever burn up in the sun with no sunscreen on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we don't have leathery looking skin either. You know, I've seen y'all with that leather skin. We don't, we don't look like leather either. Man, y'all got some problems. <laughs> Loretta, be glad you don't need no sunscreen, girl. Be glad you don't need no sunscreen. But please tell me what you think, man. I wouldn't trade my skin with none of you. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I will see you on the next video. Peace, family.